And we're back and we're moving into a second conversation for today. It's one of those conversations I know people always have a lot of questions. Yes. We're talking about land ownership, more specifically, the fact that you do need to register your land with the Ministry of Natural Resources. So with us this morning, we have Nicola Cho, who is a senior crown counsel in the Ministry of Natural Resources. Mm -hmm. And we have Patricia Roboto Blackett, who is the Registrar of Lands at the Land Registry in the Ministry of Natural Resources. Good morning. Good morning to you as well. Thank you, Le the, the mobile has come to Channel 5. Yes. Right? It's here. <laughs> <laughs> but we do appreciate you being here this morning. And thanks as well for having us. Yeah. So there is an ongoing process that is taking place. Um, I, I don't know how much people know, but it is compulsory for you to register uh, your land and you are trying to get people to understand what that process is if they've never done it before or haven't done it in a long time, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just talk about that. How much land in Belize is unregistered? Okay, well, I guess we could maybe um, start with the, what we mean by compulsory registration. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, since 1977, Belize adopted this system that we call compulsory land registration. Um, uh, what happens is that it's it's an improvement over what we had in place before and what we still have. Mm -hmm. It's a system of land title, land titling that mm -hmm. makes land transactions easier, helps to make land transactions easier. And it does this um, basically w with four components. Mm -hmm. And so we have we have our, our land uh, system in Belize. It's, it's like at least four systems we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ideally, we would want to have the whole of Belize as, as, as compulsory registration, but we haven't reached there yet. Mm -hmm. So when you ask the question, how much land unregistered in Belize, we have Corozal and Orange Walk completely under the system, and then all the other districts have portions. We, have a, we brought a yeah. map, um, I don't know if you can Yeah, uh, they're going that. to show yeah. it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, everything else outside compulsory registration areas would be unregistered land, or there is some voluntary registration under our old system. Okay. So compulsory land registration is a newer system we have. Ideally, we'd want all of Belize to be under that system, but we haven't reached there yet. Mm -hmm. So um, what makes the system different from the others? Like I said, there are basically four elements that makes transacting with lands easier. Mm -hmm. Each parcel of land mm -hmm. has a unique identity, mm -hmm. a, a number that only that piece of land has, mm -hmm. and it's represented on a map. And um, you can find who owns the land and any other interest in the land on one single document. Mm -hmm. We also brought examples which might help the viewers yeah, to yes, understand. Yes. In addition to those two, to, to those two components, um, we have prescribed farm or standard farms. So if you want to transfer a piece of land, it's a specific farm you use. It's mm -hmm. not everybody, you know, um, you know, using, um, having to draft something on their own. It's a farm you take and you just fill in. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth thing that makes it um, helps to make land transactions easier is that the system guarantees title. So mm -hmm. it says whoever is registered on the, the, the land register is proof of who is the owner. You just need to refer to that and mm -hmm. to know who is the owner of the land. Mm -hmm. And you would have to understand the older system to realize, um, you know, why this is simplifying. Why it this is now. better? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. it's not new to Belize. It's been here from 1977. Uh -huh. um, so it, we, we're just trying to encourage people to do their first registration. And um, why, as somebody that already owns land, right? Somebody that already has their name, they own their title mm -hmm. and everything. Why is it important for them to okay. register their land? So this system, it's called compulsory land registration. Yes. And the registration, um, it, it's land become, get, come into the system geographic, uh, uh, geographic area by geographic area. As we declare a registration area, mm -hmm. then you would have to um, bring your land into the system. And why you need to do first registration or why you need to bring your land into the system mm -hmm. is because the law says that any parcel of land in an area, you need to do transactions according to the legislation, according to the system. So that, that's, that's why you would, even though you have a title, you need to bring your title into this system because you need to transact as how the, 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 the law requires you to transact. Mm 
So, you know, when you say compulsory, that gets people nervous, mm -hmm. right? It's like you're telling me I have to have mm -hmm. to do it. Um, is there a timeline that you're talking about that people have to be able to, go, to get it registered? Okay. No, when, when we declare an area, there's no, you need to register by this time. Okay. But in order for you to transact with the land, you will yeah. need to register. So you can't, once the land falls within an area, you can only, there's only, um, the transactions will only have legal validity if you do it according to how the system requires you to do it. Okay, so this is the map that you were talking about? Yeah, so that's the map of Belize and all the areas in green, those are the compulsory registration areas we currently have. So everywhere else in yellow would be um, what we, either you have unregistered land in those areas or a registered title under our older system. I, is the plan to be able to change that? Um, eventually, we would... Yeah, we would expect the whole of Belize to, to eventually, but mm -hmm. after 44 years, this is where we are, we are at. Mm -hmm. We just remember the, we, the system was adopted in 1977, so we yeah. are at 44 years and this is how far we've reached. Okay. What is the, the um, challenge to, to get it to be the whole of Belize? The whole of Belize. Well, um, let's um, right. Let me go back to the beginning. Of the <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Sorry. The purpose of our visit to yeah. the talk show, Ms. Marlin, is to sensitize the general public of compulsory land registration. We want to bring awareness to landowners, documentary landowners, to make an application for first registration if they have not already done so mm -hmm. for the entire country, I believe, and they could submit their application at the land registry department in Belmopan. We have a land mobile tentatively scheduled for the 27th and the 28th next week, Thursday and Friday in Ladyville. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the purpose here on this talk show is to encourage these landowners to submit their application for first registration. Only by these landowners submit their application for first registration, then we will have a way for us to move in forward and know exactly how much area we are need to declare. Like under the Register Land Act, the Registrar of Land is and the Minister tasked with the onus, the duties and the responsibility to declare certain area compulsory registration. Mm -hmm. But before we declare this area compulsory registration, we'd like to, the general public then, documentary and owner, to come in and submit their application so that we can get everyone onto the system before we go to another area. Okay. So when you, when you talk about the process itself, I know you were, you were outlining some of the forms that are necessary. Um, let's let's talk about what people should expect if when they choose to come in mm -hmm. or if they choose to contact the ministry to uh, Proceed with the registration the first registration. Okay. Yeah, the first registration. Okay. So well, like what um, Ms. Patricia says the the idea is So we there will be a land mobile in mm -hmm. Ladyville and the registry wants to encourage persons in the Ladyville Lords Bank registration section and the Vista Del Mar registration section to make use of the mobile and you know, come there to, to, to lodge your application for first registration. Only mm -hmm. that registry application they will be dealing with on the mobile. Mm -hmm. um, so that's Ladyville Large Bank in the yellow mm -hmm. and um, Vista Del Mar in the purple. So the, the outline is more or less the boundaries of those registration sections. So if you're So in, once you live in that area. Yes, once you own land, mm -hmm. own land yes, in own, that area, you. yes. Um, yeah. This is from the Halova Bridge mm -hmm. to the Boom Kotaf. So any landowner who has documentary title can submit their claims for first registration. Oh, yeah. Either through an attorney or they can do it themselves. Right. But like I said, the mobile will be in Ladyville. So the landowner can take advantage of that opportunity and present their application there. I like so. that you said the owner of the land and not necessarily the person that lives there because a lot of people own land that don't necessarily live in the same area. Yeah, yeah. so it's, right. it's ownership. You're registering your ownership. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And if they don't reside in this area or if they don't live in Belize, mm. how are they able to? Well, remember, for the mobile, well, if you're available, able to come to the mobile, mm -hmm. you come. If otherwise, you would just have to Something lodge your application at the, the registry in Belmopan. Okay, and can you do that online? No, ma'am. No, so that somebody has to personally come in and? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So All in right. terms of the requirement, well, Ms. Patricia? Well, in terms of the requirement, um, of course, the person has to have their documentary title mm -hmm. and they need to visit the mapping section for them to identify that parcel. Like what legal counsel was saying, like each registration section, we have a unique number. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. while that number will correspond to our parcel number. Mm -hmm. So no one else will have that parcel Should number. Not, yeah. So once you register, you miss Marlene, if like say, Vista de Mar parcel 17, mm -hmm. no one else will have parcel 17. Mm -hmm. If anyone else make a claim for that same parcel, then right away that will hit a red flag for us at the department. You need to execute two RL19 form, first registration form. These form are online, or you guys can get the form while we at the mobile, or get the form in person at the land department in Belmopan, land registry. You need to have a land tax statement. It doesn't necessarily have to be a zero balance statement. Mm -hmm. um, you need to have the land owner. So in other words, you, you may owe something, you still could bring it. Yes, yes, because yeah. we have two accounts. Because they might be scared to come in if they know they owe. No, they're, they're owe. Yeah. Yeah. The reason why we ask for that is, like I said, you have an old account, yeah. and then under the new system, you get to a new account. So okay. we need to merge both accounts. Yeah. Okay. So we ask for you guys to present the land tax statement. Necessarily have to be a zero balance. Yeah. Like I get the need to submit the original ID or a certified copy of the owner IDs. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need the documentary title. Um, it cannot be a certified copy of the title, it has to be the original title. At the mobile, mm. it has to be original title. In Belmopan, they could get certified copy of title because then we have all the records there in Belmopan. Okay. But at the mobile, when I have you records have to bring the mobile, you have to bring original. Yeah. If the parcel is mortgage and encumbrances, then they need to bring a certified copy of mm -hmm. those mortgage. I said the form RL19 must be duly executed. What we mean duly executed, that on the registration form, you have to have in the registration section, parcel number, the block number, have to have in applicant name and address, just like how it's appear on the old title. We are not changing anything. Mm -hmm. We are just moving from an old system to a new system. Mm -hmm. So if on the old title, you have an address that you no longer reside, you still have to put back that address on that first registration form. They have provision after that where you can do a rectification of the register and present your proof and then you can carry it. But like I said, first registration, we're not changing anything. We are just converting from an old system to a new system. It, you want to get them in the system. Yes, yes mm -hmm. ma'am. Now, I imagine long term, this is, this is a part of a process to circumvent challenges we've seen in the past where people exactly. have, different people have claim on one, one uh, piece of land in the country. Um, it, it's one of those unfortunate situations that we've seen many times before. Um, so when you do have people who have registered their property, there at least is a system in place exactly. um, to validate. Mm. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so that's one reason um, to do first registration. It yeah. protects your title because, like I said, this new system guarantees title. It says mm -hmm. who is on the register is the owner of the land. So if you own land, you either have a minister's grant you have a, a deed of conveyance or deed of assent or um, deed of indenture. The deeds come by different names, mm -hmm. but you have a deed. So you have a minister's grant or you have a deed or you have a first certificate of title or a transfer certificate of title. These are the voluntary registration under the old registration system, the mm -hmm. first certificate and transfer certificate. You have those documentary titles. Um, you want to... You want to um, uh, secure, protect your interest, then you will bring that title into this new system because mm -hmm. whoever is on the register, is, the, the law says, is the owner of the land. So you yeah. want to protect your interest, you, you bring it into the system. Additionally, mm -hmm. because like I said, once a piece of land falls in a registration area, a compulsory registration area, you must deal with it according to the law. So you must use these prescribed forms and you must register that transaction. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to wait when you want to borrow money from the bank that you need to do the first registration because mm -hmm. you want the money now. Mm -hmm. and, and the first registration takes a process. It's not as you lodge it when you come to the land mobile, you lodge it and we'll issue you a title. No, mm -hmm. there's a process that the registry has to vet those documents. documents yeah. We have Publish. to publicize the, 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 the application for first registration. Okay. Um, and after our, uh, the registrar maybe could mention, you know, estimated length of time, then your title, your new title will be ready. So you mm -hmm. don't want to wait last minute when you want to do a transaction to do first registration. You want mm -hmm. th that done out of the way and at some point in the future, you might want to do some transaction with your land. Mm -hmm. right. And I, I really want to ask about the people that own land but don't reside in Belize anymore. Mm -hmm. So what happens when they don't register? What happens when the land just goes, nobody's here to claim it, nobody's here to do anything with it, they don't register it. 
what happens to those land parcels? Well, they just they, they, they run a risk by not registering their land. Because once you do first registration, the reason why we have a publication mm -hmm. is to aware the public, put the public on aware mm -hmm. that this person is applying for ownership mm -hmm. for this parcel of land. Okay. And the person has 31 days to respond. No one responds within that 31 days, then we issue absolute title. Like what legal counsel is saying, we guarantee title. Mm -hmm. okay. so After you, you've done your due diligence. Yes, ma'am. We've done our due diligence, the reason why we publish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have, you're the owner of a parcel of land, and you reside in the U.S. and you did not register a parcel of land. Someone can come in and apply for that parcel of land during prescription long, I mean, long prescription long possession. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so, so I you, you lose that land. Yeah, you should you clarify. That it's parcel. not that if you don't register, somebody else can steal it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. steal it. Yeah. Right. Well, you I think no what the yeah, registrar is trying to say, besides, when we on this mobile, we will only be taking documentary title uh, yes first mm -hmm. applications for first registration if you have a documentary title but yes. there's another way you can do first registration that's mm -hmm. because you'll be claiming i own the land because i've prescribed the land and what that means is the person for the layman i the squat pan this land for 12 years and so therefore i have become the owner of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so when you ask the question what can happen for an absentee land owner mm -hmm. it's not we're going beyond the the discussion but mm -hmm. because you ask it i'll answer you <laughs> say what happens if you don't register your land mm -hmm. well one um yes you, you don't protect your documentary title but if uh, the absentee land owner uh, apart from that if they're not taking care of their land somebody can come and squat there and somebody can acquire title after 12 years mm -hmm. and they would come in and make an application for first registration based on prescription mm -hmm. okay. so it, it um it's possible, yes, that the absentee landowner might lose their land because of prescription. And that goes back to one of the things I think you mentioned earlier, that yeah. it is also a protective mechanism for you and the land. Well, even if you register your land, somebody can prescribe it. Because, yeah. like I said, prescription is your, you, you've occupied the land for 12 years. Yes. Mm -hmm. First registration with your documentary title won't, won't, won't protect you from squatters. Mm -hmm. What protects you from squatters is you taking care of your land, you developing your land. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so we got uh, the land mobile coming up the 27th and the 28th. And uh, we have gone through the list of things that people uh, will need to bring. Uh, you said primarily at the mobile, you need original documents because you yes, won't sir. have access to, to the database mm -hmm. to be able to, to get the files. So bring the original documents. And then if you go to Belmopan, you can have certified documents. Yes, if you don't have your original. We should yeah. say on the land mobile, there's a fee for first registration. It's just $5. Okay. And to um, get the, the, the certification from the mapping section, that's ten, a cost of $10. So about $15 would be the, the charge. And all of that will be done at the mobile? Yes, the collection of the charge? Yeah, and yeah. the mapping? Yes, it's yes. They, they will have that service the there for you to go and get the, the, the um, certification that, your, that this parcel number is, is so and so. Okay. One of the requirements to file the first registration is that you need a sketch map mm -hmm. of the parcel. Mm -hmm. Another reason why the mapping section charge $10 for that map. So okay. once you present your application for first registration, you, we will refer you to the mapping section for them to identify. They will give the landowner a sketch and they pay $10 for that sketch. I don't know if you have shown the, the, the image of the, the, the parcel map so mm -hmm. people could get an idea of what we mean unique number and what to register. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me just ask a question. You said earlier that the um, decision, the final decision on what area will be um, subjected to compulsory registration, it, it's one that the land registry, um, I guess in, in consultation with others, make. Minister. Why is it that we are, are focusing in this area, Ladyville, Lords Bank, Vista Del Mar? Because that is the last registration section Okay, that, that was, was declared. declared. That was the last one that was yes, declared. Yeah. About a couple of years ago? Yes. It doesn't mean that the other sections, all parcels are registered in the other sections. So yeah. we're not, we, we're here because we're going on a mobile in Ladyville. Yeah. So we, we're, we want people in that area yeah. to come out. Yeah. But in all the other registration sections in Belize, for people who have not registered their land yet, where they have a documentary title, they should, you know, okay. make the um, visit to Bermapan to lodge their application for first registration. Okay. Is the, is the mobile going to eventually move out of... Um, yeah. Belize City and yes. Belize District. So In you're February, it is scheduled to go to Orange Rock District. Okay. So likewise, 
landowner documentary title can submit their claims here. But like I said, the mobile is a ministry and um, lands and survey department right. mobile. So the land registry just accompany mm -hmm. oh. lands and survey on that mobile. It'd be a good idea to have it cross country because you know not everybody will make their way to to Belmopan, and so I, I would imagine that the success of this in Ladyville would prompt you to. Yeah. And continue, that's why we are right? here on your show because yeah. that's what we're creating. Go register awareness. your land. Yes. <laughs> so the register will be on all mobile, all future mobiles. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think about it, you know I think for, for first time landowners especially. They're very unaware of what processes are necessary or, or what implications it may have. Um, when you, I know you've been going out doing other mobiles, um, the Ministry of Natural Resources, yeah. in trying to get people to register um, for land. Uh, what's the update on, on that process? Well, I don't um, think we could speak no, to that because, as the, Ms. Patricia is saying, that's the Lands and Survey Department. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So, so she's at Land Registry. And, yes. Yeah, so her her department, which is Land Registry, is just going out, making use of the the um, the facilities that will already be there for mm -hmm. the Lands and Survey Department to 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 get these applications with first registration. Yeah. So I say that because when people see a lands mobile, there's only one lands unit in yeah. people's in mm. the public's mm -hmm. mind, right? Exactly. Not land registry and land and, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and survey. So um, if somebody comes and wants to inquire and, and feel that this may be their opportunity, as they've seen in other parts of the country so far, um, with, with kind of the mobile system, will you be able to facilitate them or tell them, you know, only come if you're registering? So the, if I'm, the, the, the have information on this. The, the lands and survey department will mobile. be on this mobile. So okay. if anybody has any questions with national lands and, and what, yes. what th that's for the lands and survey mobile, yes. They um, will be there as well, in addition to the land registry who will be there for the first registration. Yeah. Nicola, you said earlier that in terms of the registration, it can be an attorney or the title owner themselves. Yes. yes. Um, what's, what's, what's your suggestion on whether or not someone needs to access legal services? Because that's a cost prohibitive uh, factor for some people. <coughs> well, um, it just depends. So that, that's one consideration, whether you can afford it. Mm -hmm. um, really, the, the, the requirements are clear mm -hmm. and simple. And so if you, we, we, you either contact the registry or there's the information on the website. So it should be easy enough for a person on their own to put in their application. Um, why would you consul consult an attorney? Maybe you don't have the time to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you want to make sure that you know the, it, everything is in order. Um, so, and you might have the, the finances to afford it. So you might go to an attorney. But really, an uh, individual can you put can in the application. You can do it on your own. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So don't let that be a hindrance no, from going in. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's only five dollars to file a first mm -hmm. registration application. You have the forms online and you have the checklist online. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can download it there and fill it out? Yes, ma'am. And then just take it to the mobile. A fee of $5 billion. And your lovely people there will be uh, there to cross-check all the information. Yes, yes ma'am. Because we all know how forms can be. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and if the registry receives an application and as they're processing it, something they realize something is missing, you know, they would, you they would require you to submit whatever it is that you need. All right. What's the one thing you find people tend to forget the most? On first registration, mm -hmm. um, updated IDs. Okay. Most of the time, the IDs are not updated. Mm. Most of the time, they submit documents, but the parcel is mortgage. They make reference on the trans the doc the application that is that it is mortgage, but no mortgage is presented to us. Okay. So you need that, and you need the the mortgage papers. You need an updated ID. You need the, the application, application for land certificate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you need the submission form. All submission right. form is the form that we gather your contact information or email address. If something is wrong with that application, we can contact you either email or via telephone. So on the submission form, I should add what, what, what the registrar indicated on your application. You put back your name as on the title and your address as on the title. Now the submission form um, that allows us to know what what, you can put your current address on that form, you know, and then later on you can apply to update the register to change your, your address to your current address. Okay. So, so even if the info, and, and, and you said that earlier, even if the information has changed, you know, the things that you may need to alter, you just go ahead and do the registration and then you can do the changes after. Yes. yes. So you'll be in Ladyville from the 27th it's to the 27th 28th. And 28th. Um, what time should people start arriving? 
I think the mobile numbers start like from 8 in the morning. Mm -hmm. 8 a.m. to 5. Like Sometimes they run later than 5. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so what just, location just in the, the what amount location? of public location? that, yeah. So that where access. in Ladyville can they find the mobile? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> it's somewhere in Ladyville, though, for certain at Midland, but yeah. okay, so it's somewhere in Ladyville. So to get the update Most not the basketball the court. Due yeah. to COVID, they have to get a yeah. an open space. Open um, space that can Can they find the these updates people. on social media, on the website? Does the ministry have a website? Okay. You can check with our PR officer. Okay. It will provide more information for you guys before that date. Yes. All right. And you said that there is going to be a process. It has to be publicized. There's a 31 day period for challenges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what's, what's the estimated time if no one challenges the, the, the publication? Then about three months before you get your completed title. Okay. And why three months? Like I said, uh, we submit application to the newspaper on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you submit your application after the date that we send it, then your application won't go in until the next month publication. Okay. Okay. Sometimes applications are submitted, like I said, the parcel is not surveyed as it. We have to forward that application to the mapping and survey department. Mm -hmm. It'll take a time for them to process it and put that onto the map. Okay. So all those delay your application. Mm -hmm. For us, the ideal situation for a first registration application, people get back their title within two months' time. Yeah. Some people get back their title within five or six months because these applications have to pass the other section. Mm -hmm. So the idea, two months' time. But just the safety six. that they have done the first procedure is already sufficient for them to feel secure about that. Exactly. Okay. Right. And then there's on, we have a um, tracking system on, ah. online. So you, when you when you load your application, you'll get a receipt, mm -hmm. and the receipt will have a number for your application, and you can go online and put in that number and see how far your application is is. You know, and um, if the registrar says three months, if you see online that it's not, it, it's there for a while, not moving, mm -hmm. you could just easily call the registry or visit the registry to inquire uh, about, uh, yes, yeah. when, when your right. certificate will be ready. And also with your telephone, we ask for your telephone number. And as mm -hmm. soon as we accept the application, you get a text to your phone tell at the instrument LRS that have been received. Nice. Perfect. So nice. Since last year, we implement that system for the first registration. Any final advice to uh, Ladyville, Lords Bank, and Vista Del Mar residents? Well, take advantage of the mobile yes. and come out. Like I say, I'll be a cost of $15 as opposed to getting an attorney to do that for you. Or like you I save you the trip to Belmapan. Save yeah, you the trip to Belmapan. Yeah. Like I said, mm -hmm. prescribed farm, basically you're filling the blank. So take advantage of the mobile and move on over to Ladyville on the 27th and 28th of January. And we, we will have the farms out there. So if mm -hmm. you, you don't come with your document filled in, although if you come with it filled in, it's faster for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. But we will have the farms that you're required to fill in. Fill in. So I think what, if I'm not missing anything, what you will need to bring is your original title. title. Your IDs. Your IDs, your actual IDs. Um, you could already do the, make the photocopies and have a JP sign, but you need to bring the actual IDs with that photocopy so that we can see. Um, if you just happen to bring the uh, actual ID, we will be able. Will we be able to make copies there? Yes, we will be able to make copies. Yes, and, 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 and you will be there. Yes, and I will the be registrar there will be mobile. there. So as registrar, she can certify uh, uh, those copies. So your your original title, your ID, your fifteen dollars, um, your if you need to make a statutory declaration, you will be able to do that because she will be there and can take your oath. <laughs> because um, you might need to do that. So for sure, they need their title, their $15, their IDs. Basically, that's that's more important. Paper, and more on page papers if they have that. Yes, you would yeah. need, you would need um, copies of your, if you have a mortgage or any other encumbrance yeah. on the land, you will need a copy of that encumbrance. And yes. the applicant don't have to present himself in person. Yes. Someone own land within that area and the person reside in the US and anywhere outside Belize, any agent can submit that application for that person. With an authorization? With that, not really an authorization because first registration anyone can sign first registration remember first registration we are not changing anything mm -hmm. yeah it's just putting it in the it just put it in on the system you have to follow up after. yes ma'am all, all right, right ladies yeah. well thank you for coming in and yes, breaking it too. down for us we thanks appreciate well. it yes thanks, thanks thank you guys. all right yeah. we're gonna go ahead and take a break when we come back bringing the legend of the sleeping giant to life we'll tell you about the belize pantheon fantastic project after the break, so please stay tuned.